Um, but clinching that home playoff game, uh, how big is that for this group? Um, obviously, it's your first year here, but to have knowing what the fans are like, to know that you'll be playing in front of them. Yeah, it's a massive gift for, for the best fans in the world. And it's also a big gift to staff, the players before this year, and the front office, and the, all the people involved in this organization. And all our sponsors that have been there for us to to be able to enjoy uh, a semi-final here and see the team compete in a in a really big, massive game uh, at home is huge. And so, I, and that's a lot of the emotion that I had. It was just so cool to see it, how much it means to everyone that's been fighting this for four years. Um, for for me and the players and the staff, it's been a, an objective to to be our best in every single game, each game, each week, one game at a time. Um, our philosophy has been that if we can take care of that, we can um, be our best and recover in time and then get the game plan right and execute and, and perform, that we should be in a good position by the end of the season. And uh, I think that philosophy has helped us a lot, especially in the front end when we had a lot of road games where we're playing, we're on the ropes a lot, uh, in a tough schedule without training much. You know, And now we're kind of coming into a rhythm here. And the Sunday game against New York wasn't as easy or comfortable as everyone would love. It was a very challenging and tough game in New York. We're very good. But we're in a position now where we're really um, growing as a group and as a team. We're getting time, more time around each other. Um, and I think it's a great timing to head into this last league game. You guys are eight, um, basically 8-0 eight oh at home with your full lineup here, 8-1-1 one one overall um, at Providence Park. Why do you... That's something that the team hasn't been able to do in past years, um, have that kind of home dominance. What's changed this year? What have you been able to do to bring the group together? Uh, our aim is, I think our away record has been pretty good as well. I'm not sure where that stands, but when you've got a focus to be your best and maximise all the little tiny details for each game, if you achieve that and you've got a good group, and we have, we've got a good good players. I know the roster has always been strong in Portland. Um, we go back to the first year in 2014, roster was exceptional even last year. We've got an exceptional roster, but our effort and energy every day. So the answer is every day we just want to get better. We want to improve and we want to move closer to the, th the things we've spoke about right from the beginning. And I think when you come down to, to getting those those three points that mean you, you play a playoff at, at home, you do reflect on a lot of the hours and minutes of uh, conversation and video on the front end. That, and you know, then we spoke. We said it was investment into the bigger picture, and it's nice that the bigger picture is is, is coming together. Um, you know, right now we're in a place where we got a league game that has a huge possibility of meaning even more to the club, and we can't take a focus off that. Huh. If if we get the result on Saturday night with Washington Spirit, um, you know, we can we could be in a position to win the Shield uh, and make more history. So our focus right now is, is firmly on that. How much of a priority is that if you guys can win the Shield to you know, play your best lineup and get the result to do that? Uh, the objective is always to be the best in every game and it's cool that that's in the, in the background. Um, this Sky Blue game, let's say that the Shield isn't up for grabs. You want to finish that Sky Blue game as strong as you can and with momentum heading into, into the Sunday, um, October 2nd semi-final. You know, and it works both ways. Sometimes the game won't work that goes really well. And um, now you, you've got a chip on your shoulder all week across the group and there's this hunger. Or it goes well and you've got this rhythm. And I felt that's what happened this week. We got off to a good start against Boston. That we were our very, very best against Houston. And, and then New York, we, um, we struggled to deal with the thing we knew that was coming, the high pressure. You know, the once, the first time we did it, we were in on goal one on one. The second time we did it, we almost got in one on one, and the third time we got another goal. Um, it's it's important that that we take care of the, the things we can to perform well against Sky Blue, and if we do that, we can we can move forward into the playoffs. Like you mentioned, this team has always been talented since 2013, but I don't think they've been nearly as consistent um, or come together in the way they have this year during the regular season. What do you think you've been able to do as a coach or focus on with them that's helped bring out the best in this group? Our priority was to, to go after, keep players and go after players that are going to work to be their best every day, that, that have a genuine care for um, their performance for club and, and the club and their team and the family here in the city is, is a priority for them. And 
uh, we did that. That was done in the off season. Yeah, we, there was good players like that happened before. But I think the group, the character of the group, is really strong. So for me, then it, it it's um, still me and the staff. It's a difficult job, but it's easier because if players are taken care of, the little things they can take care of. Um, you end up not managing as much and. I think we've got a, a group that is sold and, and completely all in on putting the team first. Um, players have had to deal with playing zero minutes, then next week playing 90 and then the following playing zero. And they still work and they still train and they still want this um, playoff game to be at home for the team. They still want to be able to have a shot at the shield. They still want to be able to um, build towards a championship. Um, a very unselfish group that are committed to putting the team first. And for us as staff, that's always been our focus. We, we've spoken a lot and we've behaved and taken actions on rewarding people that do that, that put the team first, that um, on the weekdays, on the bad days, can still step up and perform with focus and effort and, and a good attitude. And we've got a great, um, great group that's committed to that idea. You alluded to this a minute ago, but uh, your recent opponents have been pressing your defense pretty high. Um, as you've been possessing the ball, how do you deal with that? And what are you expecting from your team in the next few season after the first season? When we played Western New York away, they pressed us, and the two times, three times that we we cut them open, it's almost it's hard to break it. But once you do, you you almost find yourself, and we got the quality to end up in front of goal. If you think the away game, we sliced them, and Sink got in one on one and tapped it in. We broke through them. Tobin went down for a penalty in um, in New York. So other teams, you've seen other teams, we've skipped the pressure because even if we did break it, there's more support. I think with New York, we've, we know that if you can break it, then you can get towards goal. We just struggled to do that. You know, if you tell when the difference is both teams were tired, but when you're, when you're playing long balls like I think New York set out to do and then run and press, your energy, um, it's almost, it looks like you've got more energy than you have when you're trying to make decisions and fast split seconds under pressure and play and move the ball like we were the fatigue you could tell it was there the decisions weren't as sharp we weren't breaking lines the way we normally do we're kind of missing the opportunity we're missing the opportunity behind the back line missing the opportunity to break their midfield pressure that came um, so a bit of fatigue then both teams were tired and they were on the road uh, I just think we had the the harder strategy but then also the most rewarding and I thought we were pinned in we were pinned in for a large period of the game but it was one where we did not want to skip that pressure because the rewards were too huge if we did break it. Well, I noticed against Houston as well, it seemed like they were chasing and chasing. Eventually they got tired and you were able to break through there at the end of the game with those two goals. Um, is that something that you noticed as well? Were you just hoping to wait that one out? Uh, we, we knew, I think, the away team, you know, we fought this battle. The away team often struggles to, to stay at the same pace as the home team for 90 minutes in this league. That's just a fact of the last three years. Um, at this point, everyone's working on adrenaline. Not, teams don't normally drop off when they should. Uh, but we thought we thought the second half could be a very different game to the first half. And we actually thought five, the first five or ten minutes was going to be the most hardest and brutal. It, it wasn't. It was all, it was the easiest. We eased into the second half. They they looked like their distances got bigger. We broke them at more ease. We could have had a couple more. We got the third, and then um, I got a bit of complacency kicked in and. That's a great lesson for us. I mean, it wasn't good to see and it got scary, but what a lesson to, to get away with um, and to learn from. Um, and you mentioned earlier, you know, you guys have the best fans in the world. You've coached um, outside of here in England. Um, what Do you think there's anywhere that matches up to the fan support here? Or is there any place that can get here? Uh, I'm not experienced enough on the men's game to answer that question. Obviously, the on the women's on side, the timbers, I mean. Yeah. Is there anywhere else in the world on the men's game? I don't know. On the women's, no. Um, it's not the, you know, I know the first impression is it's the quantity of fans. And that's what's really hit me at the very beginning of this season. The, the quantity is not what's special about these fans. It's the, the passion and the personal connection that they make with the players and the, the feelings that they put into everything. You know, the TIFO on, on Sunday and the signs that they make and the support and whether they are screaming and shouting uh, over here or or they're, they're there with a thorns colour on them uh, and not screaming and shouting. There's always a personal uh, effort to support the team. And, and that's what's hit me the hardest and I think the, the, what makes this the most special. I know it's easy to point at the 21,000 and the quantity, but it's more than that. It's very personal it's in, and the players feel it. The players see the little stuff and 
I'm sure they, they're reading the stuff that they get sent and, and it does it, it pushes you on and it makes you feel grateful for, for being in a place like this.